this to Ronnie uh, Wilson, who owns it, claims at various approaches by council officers and other people that he only burns timber. This is a complete load of rubbish, as you will see this one on the top. There are many things that aren't timber indeed. Yeah. A couple of, I think Mr. Ellis has some photographs of there's a little two to pass around. You'll see on this top one, yep. the double bed mattress. Yes, indeed. Can we give this gentleman a microphone, please? Yeah, so this gentleman is showing us some photographs of what looks like all manner of domestic rubbish. And yeah. he's saying that that's what's been burned. So I think rubbish. we need to pass not, this to somebody to look at for you. He's importing this domestic rubbish from contractors around the place. There's a firm called Clear, Clean and Clear, which assume they are building cleaners and bring the rubbish to Mr. Mr. Wilson. Sorry. <coughs> Anyhow, yeah. They, the stuff gets piled up. As you'll see on these photographs, there are seven armchairs, upholstered armchairs, visible. Yeah, yeah. Two settees. A whole load of plastic, sheets, plastic coated timber, and the likes of that. The net result is lots of smoke, as you'll see in the final picture on the two, with the fire burning brightly on the Saturday morning. What I would like the council to do is to investigate this guy properly, because for two reasons. Ken, can I just interrupt you? Because you yes. and I, I'd better explain this. You and I have discussed this one last weekend. <laughs> and I, I have arranged for the uh, environmental health people to go down this Saturday morning yeah. Yeah. Okay. to see what's going on down there. So this is in hand. I just wanted to okay. reassure oh, you that. Really I appreciate well, thank you for that. that. But the environmental health people, I got down there a year and a half ago, and nothing came of it because the guy stands there and swears blind he only yeah. burns clean timber. Uh, clean because he's, I, so I we think that. So he's, some evidence he's to only allowed to, you, to burn uh, rubbish <coughs> as a result of his business there. This guy is taking money away from the council because yeah. the, these contractors would have to be taken to the council to, to be rid out. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Got so we've got it. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. whole thing is absolutely. A cabinet member would like to see. We've got the cabinet member here for the smart environment. Smart so, I mean, I'm relieved to hear um, by Councillor Alice how it's all in hand, but I, I'd also like to look into this. Look, I, don't, I, I don't want to get into an argument here now. I'm not. 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 i am i am not i am not Past started this off, but as I say, it was done a year and a half ago at least, and I still took it up with him in myself, not with Mr. Ellis, with Mr. Wilson, the Mark Gardner. Okay. But he has stood there and steadfastly denied no, I, I get any it. Chair, if it's okay, these, these photographs, I'll speak after the meeting. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. These yeah. photographs are simply so to demonstrate yeah. the sort of things yeah. 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 which should be processed yeah. by so, the council. So what we'll do is this um, Councillor Brian will speak with you after the meeting and okay. see what else can be sorted out. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you all. Yeah. I'm sorry to take this more time. Is this the site next to the main road junction? Yes. Yeah. Is this the site that had the fire brigade yeah. presence? Yeah. 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 Okay. Gentlemen here on the front. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Chair, uh, my name is Paul Harrison from West Kirby. I have one observation and one question. Observation is we've had uh, two councillors tonight, Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Patrick. Um, one making an observation about people coming here and we should do more of it, and I agree with that. But we are not people to be having digs at. The other one was about 51% um, of people feeling they couldn't uh, sway council meetings. I'm not so all surprised when you've got. Uh, Jackie Hall over there bring a, a comment from all her people and she was basically talked down to and I don't think that's on. That's My not. question is, two years ago the, the bridge in West Kirby was shut for 18 months as a temporary method. Yeah. Two years and a bit later on it's still closed. I've been in contact with British Rail who own the bridge. 
and their risk assessment is on an engineering view only that it's unsafe to have traffic in two directions over 21 tonnes. An engineering assessment. There is no physical assessment on the impact it's having to the people of West Kirby of having that bridge shut uh, in one, sorry, one direction only. Can the council please take it up to move forward with getting this bridge reopened two-way traffic? That easy question. Yeah. And if they can't, if they say if the problem is it's an engineering assessment of vehicles over 21 tons, sure, put a weight restriction on it and have vehicles of six tons or ten tons or whatever two way. You can't get two buses, which is what their problem is, on that bridge at the same time. So by the physical size of the vehicles, that will limit the loading on the bridge. Okay, thank you for that. I'm sure we can take note of that and David, yeah, we, we can. I asked that question myself because I use that road. The, the, the reason given to me is that if you open it back to two-way traffic, you, have, you lose all control about people ignoring the weight restrictions and taking heavy vehicles over there that are heavier than the basic weight limit. And also you run the risk of two vehicles actually coming onto the bridge. It is a, it is a rail track bridge over a railway and that was a, the solution that's in place was agreed with rail track. But I'll happily take it back here. Yeah. Thank you. Just to say that I took this up after the 18 months had gone by, because a lot of people were complaining, and the answer, frankly, I got from council officers was the council has no you know, whip hand over network rail. Okay, we maybe have one time for one more. If we can be quick, we might even fit in two. Um, I just want to say, is it just me or does everybody else see the irony in the fact that Councillor Patrick has made a presentation tonight which stated that half the residents of Wirral don't believe they can influence things um, and could, it could be improved if we had greater input? Um, and that, so, so why have the council refused to engage with residents tonight about the Hoy Lake Golf Resort? Yeah, 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 yeah. You stated that you've had an inordinate amount of questions tonight. I suspect the vast majority of them about the Hoy Lake Golf yeah, Resort. Yeah. Not one of you has answered one of those questions. Not one of you. What I've done is taken questions from people who are present who've asked questions. How many questions were submitted in advance? 23. 23 questions, and how many were actually answered? None. Well, actually, I think Matt has answered some. There were 26 questions altogether. So there are there are a number of questions and there are a number of things that are bothering people. Yes, of course there are. But the the concerns that we all share, I believe, to make sure that our lovely Wirral stays green and pleasant are important. But we can't sort all of that out in one evening, but we can make sure that all these questions are limited, are shared, and are part of the record of our meeting. And they're going to be answered yeah. and sent to us. Okay, okay. Just from the last meeting, just on a practical level, um, there was a, a key cabinet meeting in December, which made the decisions, officers work on decisions of cabinet. There was a key cabinet decision in December, I'm sure many of people in this room know that, because you follow this thing very closely. That allowed officers to proceed with the joint venture group to carry out studies because I thought them, I know most of you will have seen it, I did bring 25 paper copies of the cabinet report that are at the back so people can take that away if they haven't seen it and that's the current position of the council and it's the current position of officers. At the last meeting there was a, a comment made that, that um, someone would like to see a plan of the, of the link road which is part of the proposal and again I brought a plan along of the link road, I apologise it's a highway engineer's drawing so it has a lot of figure work on it. But again, I've put it at the back of the room um, and people can look at that. You can see how the road links in at the, at the industrial estate, the level crossing end, and you can see where it comes out to Slogan Massey Road. The other thing is, a whole series of questions have been asked to the council, and including these meetings and also the meeting that was referred to earlier at Hoylake, at the, at the public meeting, and what the officers that are working on this project have done, have put together um, answers to 40-odd questions which they feel have been asked, and copies of that will be attached to the minutes of, of this.
this meeting. There's no mention in them of the £26 million. In those questions you put here tonight, there's not one mention of the £26 million that Labour, the Labour leader, is going to borrow <coughs> and then he's going to borrow it and then loan it to a flawed joint venture vehicle, which is totally against Labour Party policy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't you're the 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 KXP, please move it. You're blocking the road. Sorry for this. KXP is for focus. Okay. Ford focus. Ford focus. The Ford focus is blocking somewhere. I, I think we've also got to be conscious uh, to the lady who asked the question that you know some of us are actually vehemently against the golf course. Yeah. So it's very difficult for, for, for some of us to answer questions because we are rather biased, I'm afraid. I, I'm personally. What's the point of being here then? Well, answer questions? Well, well, the point is, you can answer questions, but I've got to be very careful as, as an elected member that I don't look as though I'm supporting something that's my personal view. There are other people in this group who also think that they're against the uh, All Right Golf Club uh, course. It's very difficult to give you an answer in support of it when I vehemently disagree with it. So, in fairness to you, and I have answered a couple of questions to you on an email, um, you have to bear in mind we're not all of the same mind about the whole Lake Golf Course. But are you in a recognition of what was stated earlier at the presentation that there were too, too few people feeling that they were consulted yes. about what happens in their area. Wouldn't this be a good start to start the consultation process again? There is huge feeling against this. Mm -hmm. I only know of any negative feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the positive, they may be there, I haven't heard them. But there's lots of stuff about flooding, um, traffic, roads. I mean, I've written a long list and I did submit a question, it hasn't yeah. come out. But couldn't the two things be brought together? The will to consult people and make them feel involved and answer this question of this golf course once and for okay. all. So I, I do think that there's been a lot of um, we're willing to say for a number of reasons to, to have questions and try to address them. And as David says, you're not by no means looking at a panel of people here who think that it's the right thing to do. By no means. However, the constituents people, don't either and no, we are the voters. And the payers, we pay you do as well. We all pay at the end of the day. We all pay. We don't want it. It's all our money. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the point that there's a process which the council officers like David have to go through and we all have our views but some of us do sit on planning from time to time and you cannot arrive at the planning committee having said in public one thing or the other too much. You have to arrive with an open mind to listen to the debate and that's really difficult as a local person who lives in a local area but you have to do it because that's your role as a councillor. So people don't necessarily all think this is an all singing, all dancing, wonderful idea, and you can't assume that they do just because they're cautious in the words that they use back. I think David had something to add. Something, something to say, yeah. Um, I brought along the December report because I think that's where people need to start if they haven't read it already. I take the point about the questions, I'll take that away. If you feel there are some things missing from that 40 odd question list we put together, I will take that away. In terms of where things are from December 17, um, clearly, that's the that's the resolution that officers are working to, which is to continue with to continue to to investigate the project, working with the joint venture company, and for the joint company to, joint venture company to carry out their studies. The joint the JV company have assured the council that they have the capital in place which they need to carry out those studies, and those studies will take 12 months. And the studies cover a lot of things that were raised in the questions, which came in transport, environmental, flooding, uh, wildlife habitat. So those studies, it's anticipated that those studies would start in the next They should be weeks. independent, not done by the developer. Yeah, yeah. 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 And what about and alternatives? Why does it have to be golf resorts? What can, about can we let, resorts? Let because finish golf course what he was going to say. Can we, can we please let David finish what he was saying? Yeah. So that, those, those studies are expected to start in the next few weeks. When I've gone through this with the officers who were dealing with this, and indeed there are people in the room who've met with those officers and listened to the answers probably on more occasions than I have, I'm assured that the study period will take 12 months, and I'm assured they'll be, they'll be independently assessed and validated, the studies. And, and, and the thing, you know, you shouldn't make, having been involved in the schools programme for, what, 25 years, sometimes studies produce an answer, which means the end of that scheme, that project. So there seems to be an assumption, don't make the automatic assumption that that basket of studies which cover 
a number of aspects of the scheme will automatically all say it's, it's a really good idea. I am told that at the end of the study period, which will take 12 months, that there will be further consultation. As has been mentioned here, it would then have to form a planning application, which again would lead to further consultation. And if that planning decision was approved, as was said earlier, they'd be called in by the Secretary of State. As a gentleman asked earlier about would the houses be built before the golf resort, that, that question came up last time and I took that back to the offices that deal with this project. I am told that the initial works would be to build the access roads in and, build, and do all the groundworks for the golf course and that the house building would start 10 or 11 months later when the golf course was nearing completion. So the, the, the assurance was given that the golf course would be built first. We have one last question, the gentleman at the back, and that will be our last question. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, it's Mike Harvey from West Carvey. Just, uh, I'll um, read my question to you, but I do notice on your question and answers that item five, the council is committed to making it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, to me, mm -hmm. strikes as that is what is going to happen. Yeah. My question was uh, stated was that the Nicholas Joint Venture Group, NJVG, are not a suitable partner for World Council's Herbrain scheme to build Van Nage properties on a floodplain in Hoylake. The Nicholas name has nothing to do with the famous golfer, right. nor does the track record of MJVG warrant a sensible development partner. There is no need for properties, there, there, sorry, there is a need for properties for first time buyers in the Wirral. Social with, housing. Pardon? Social housing. Let the gentleman right. finish his question, please. And this could be utilised by using brownfield sites and utilising yeah. the skills of local yeah. builders yeah. and tradesmen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping investment in the borough and so doing improving the infrastructure of the community. Sorry, am I boring you, Councillor Hughes? <laughs> if the council is proposing a £26 million pound development to NJVG, they should be looking nearer to home and keeping money within the borough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I asked the question what was the proposed cost to the council? In the question and answers, a figure of 650,000 was given. Mm -hmm. That figure was true possibly last year. I don't know if it's increased, but I would presume it has. We have an example of New Ferry that's had £350,000 spent. That 650000 is absolutely atrocious that anyone can think of spending that sort of money on a brain scheme. Yeah, it's a lot more than that, by the way. Yeah. So, thank you very much for your question. I think the council's cost. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, thank you very much for reading us your, your information and, and posing that question about cost. I'm sure that we can provide figures for that. But you've got one now, Dave? Yeah, I can respond to some of those things. And again, I'm not avoiding answering some of it, but some of it, some of it you're obviously making statements and judgments about organisations that I can't comment on. And clearly I can't go into the political arena. In terms of, in terms of is the council working on brownfield sites as well? Although I'm not, I'm not involved with the golf resort project closely, I am heavily involved in projects on brownfield sites. The council is releasing brownfield sites, former school sites and other sites for residential redevelopment. And we are trying, working really hard as a group with the Peel Port and the Peel Land and Property to develop schemes for 800, initially 800 dwellings on the dockside, uh, at Brownfield site uh, in, in Birkenhead, um, which range from family homes to apartments and also uh, specialist dementia care. And it, to, to make that happen, just as an example, there have been three national competitions where the council bids for money against other councils and we've been successful in bringing in around 14 million. One was a scheme to replace bridges and infrastructure in that area to make it work better, which was 6 million. We've also secured um, money for housing infrastructure fund recently, another 6 million, 6, 7 million pounds, which is to put in the infrastructure start and allow that area to be developed for housing because clearly it, it hasn't had housing on it, it's always been a port. 
um, and everything has its back to it. So you've got to virtually rebuild the infrastructure. And then more recently, we've just been awarded another three million pound grant to do work on Tower Road, where we'll metropolitan colleges to again sort all that out. And I know people say that means you're spending 40 million pounds on a relatively short stretch, but we can't. We wouldn't get that money for anything else. It would just simply go to somewhere else in the country. So in terms of are we trying to develop brownfield sites as well? Yes, we are. In terms of the spend, I anticipated you might ask that tonight. The spend to date, the first tranche of money was to get to the development agreement stage. That was £237,000. £237, um, the, the council has approved a further tranche of £595,000, but of that, the spend to date, as of today, was £157,000. The tranche of 595 does include £200,000 to investigate uh, and draw up schemes and plans to remediate the former Hoylake Urban District Council waste site. And certainly if I lived in Hoylake and lived near that site, I would want the council at some point, the council is responsible for that site, uh, given how rubbish was disposed of in the, dates, in, the de in the days of Hoylake Urban District Council. That is investment that I would want to see the council do to find out what's happening there and remediate it. So those are, those are the costs as of today. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think on those figures, we are running out of time. On the figures you just said, on my quick reckoning, that seems to be nearer a million pounds. No, 237 spent in the first phase and 157 spent to date. I'm sure, that, I'm sure that you could have a conversation in a moment about that, but I'm really sorry. I feel that everybody's been very patient, but time has passed by. And uh, I'm sure that this will be a topic of conversation in the next meeting of the Constituency Committee, don't you think? Yes. Yeah. And uh, who knows, there may be a larger element of it on the agenda. But thank you very much for attending this evening. You can see the date of the next meeting is there for your information. And thank you for the evening.